Hello, uh, welcome to the Mostly Yoga Podcast. My name is Aaron and this is my show. And uh, this is the uh, once in a while I would, once in a, once in a while I would create a different segment, different from the usual interviews that I would call an interlude episode. And this is one of those episodes. So thank you for listening. Um, as the title suggests, uh, I will be talking about my experience with my um, ACL reconstruction surgery. And I will be, uh, it, it sort of acts as a, like a little blog thing for me to listen to in the future. It acts as something for me to, to share with people how, what went down, how I experienced it, what I did, and what to expect if you are going through your own recovery. And, uh, it's just something to document, I guess. So I'm just gonna do it. Uh, so I'll break it down into different segments just to, just to keep it, you know, succinct. Uh, how I tore it. Uh, how it felt. What did I do? What did the doctor say? Um, what did I do during the days that led up to the surgery? How the surgery went down? And how the recovery went, is going, cause I'm, I'm, cause I'm recovering now, right? Uh, so yeah. Okay, so, uh, okay, uh, and we will start with just how I tore it. Story number one. Uh, so I tore it doing BJJ. Oh, wait, okay, so, <laughs> an ACL for, what does it stand for? Let me see. Uh, ACL stands. Uh, okay, so for the, an ACL stands for the anterior cruciate ligament, which is a ligament, which is one of the, which is one of the two ligaments in the center of the knee that helps to connect the femur to the tibia, which is your, I think your thigh bone and your shin bone. It's the, it's the, it's the ligament that connects your thigh to your shins, lah, right in the knee. And it, helps to keep the knee stable. It's one of the seat belts that, that are staying, that are in the knee. So there's the ACL, the PCL, the MCL, the LCL. There's a bunch of, let's call it seat belts for, for general term. Uh, um, I'm no doctor. I'm no medical student. I'm just sort of breaking it down in a, in a way to understand what I understood through this whole procedure, through this whole, you know, visit the doctor, they'll tell you some stuff and I, I sort of get an idea of what's happening within the body. So my knee has a, has all these different seat belts. I tore one of them. And the way that you tear, or rather the common way that you tear your ACL is through like a twisting motion or a pivot, a pivoting motion that, that is. So, okay. So like the common ways to tear your ACL is through those sports like basketball, soccer, where your legs are like turning in an awkward direction and, uh, or maybe like someone falls on your knee or something. So it just, it just, it's a twisting or a, it just bends. Oh, fuck. What am I talking about? It just manipulates your leg in a different way that shouldn't be in that way. What? <laughs> anyway, like I said, I'm not a doctor. Um, so jujitsu is one of those things as well that the sole purpose of it is to force your joints to be in a vulnerable position and to manipulate the body in that way to, to get that tap, to get that submission. So, so I wasn't, for, okay, so like, so, so story number one, how I tore it. Um, uh, I'm not going to tell you the gym. I'm not going to tell you who it is or who, who did it. I don't really know that guy. I, I just met him once. That's, that's like also like the, the crazy thing, you know? So I was on trial at this new place that I was, you know, tr- seeing what I wanted to, 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 to stay with that, 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 that school. Um, and I was on trial, I think it was my second week on trial, and then this, this new guy came in, he's not new, he's new to the gym, but he's like a a blue belt, he was a higher belt, so I'm a white belt, I'm forever a white belt, been white belt for a long time, um, so, so, uh, for those of you who don't know, like, jujitsu etiquette, right, leg locks are a bit forbidden, especially for lower belts because the way that you man- the way that you leg lock someone isn't as obvious as how you would armbar someone so 
uh, how do I say this? Like, like Lake Loksa are a bit forbidden because if you're new to the sport, you won't know whether your leg is going to compromise to the point where it compromises. So that's why people don't do it because you feel like you can tahan and then you and then it just snaps or something breaks. Um, so that's yeah. So so I mean the. So the the guy he's a bluebell. He knows how to like lock people, and he was trying to do that on me a few times. And I don't know a lot. I don't know anything about leg locks except for how to get out of it, like that one move to get out of that particular leg lock. So so I don't know the the concept of it. I don't know what I'm doing. So I just know that oh, when this happens, I need to do this. That's the only thing I know. And to the benefit of the coach, when he saw that that guy was trying to leg lock me, and he so the coach was trying to manage the space and everything, he did tell the guy to like, okay, don't leg lock, don't don't leg lock me, right? Because I'm a white belt, because that's just the, the rule, right? But also, unfortunately for him, he uh, the 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 blue belt, he didn't, because there's also different levels of leg locks. Some are forbidden, like some are like you can't even do it in a tournament because it's so illegal. And then some are just a normal, yeah, you can do it in the tournament. So he thought like, oh, just no heel hooks, no, no, none of that. But he thought he could still do an ankle lock. So that was what he did. So he dived for the ankle lock. Um, <laughs> how do I explain it? So he's trying to manipulate my ankle to, to break it. So for me to escape it, I need to turn. So we will end up in this little tornado where we will just turn, 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 turn in one direction. So imagine he's holding on to my, Ankle with his, he's like he has his, he has my foot pressed onto his chest. He's holding it down with his chest, right? His whole body is holding down my one ankle. He's kind of manipulated by turning it in one direction, and I'm supposed to turn in the same direction to sort of we'll both turn and then we'll just sort of see if I can. I'm lucky enough to get out of it. Um, I turned. I did the right thing. I turned in the same direction, and then when I felt an opening in the other right direction, so I just did like a a a, a turn the other way, and then he was still holding on to that leg. So obviously, you just imagine my my foot, my shins, hold it in one position, but my thigh was twisting the other way. So then I heard a that that fateful pop. That I heard that so loudly, like. And then, and then I was like, "Oh sh!" I was like, "Ah!" <laughs> I was like, "Ah!" Then, yeah, okay, I tap. Ah, okay, I tap. And then he released it, and I was like, I couldn't move. I felt numb, and it all happened very fast. You know, it's like we were, we were like uh, adrenaline's pumping, and um, so I felt the pop, and I just, I just, I just knew like, oh no, like it's something is something happened. And it, it popped, and but it didn't hurt. It just felt like, uh, it didn't hurt. It just felt like something was wrong. Something was loose. Like I, I could feel like hey, something is not connected anymore. It's very strange. Like your body knows these things. So I just, I didn't understand that. I didn't know what was wrong, but I felt, I knew something was off. So then I, I, I was like, okay, I can't move, and. And I sort of laid on that spot for a bit, and then and then I sort of like leaned onto the wall, and it sort of once once like the the, the adre- adrenaline died off, started to wiggle my toes for a bit, and uh, class was sort of ending. So I just okay, I'm just gonna stand up, and then when I stood up and I put pressure on my foot, I I, I was like ah again, and that was like so involuntary that that like it, you know you try not to make noise when you're in pain, but when I put my foot down and I stepped on it. I the the ah was like involuntary. I was just like ah. It was a bit embarrassing for sure, but it also scared me even more because like oh no, like what is this new feeling? Like now I can't walk. Like everything is different now, so I had to be more careful. Um, I sat there for a bit. The guy was very nice. The the guy that did it to me. Um, he was very apologetic, and I guess we were just both excited and I don't blame him um it was when I look back on it it was like it was it was nobody's fault it was everybody's fault but it was also nobody's fault it's one of those things that like 
it was gonna happen and uh, you know you can blame him for being too aggressive uh, you can blame me for not um, for not tapping or for or for just being too egoistic I didn't wanna I didn't wanna I wanted to escape I just wanted to get escape like no matter what it took you can blame the coach for not watching out for us you can blame you can blame a lot of people but then it's also it's not there was no ill intent no one was trying to do this I mean we were because that's the I mean <laughs> he wasn't trying to hurt me we were trying we were just doing jujitsu right it's, it's, it's the price to pay uh, uh, so that happened in, in January it's March now it's about two months ago anyway um, I showered and then I just walked all the way back to the station to take the train back and then that day when I went home, I just felt like, oh no, something is wrong. Something is, something's wrong. I need to, I need to go see someone. So I went to the TCM near my house. Long story short, uh, it didn't really, didn't really, cause I thought it wasn't, I, I didn't think it was an ACL tear. I thought it was just, oh, something, a sprain. You know, I sometimes like, I crack my knuckles. There's a sound, it's a normal pop, man. Like I can, let's say I can, can do it right now right so it's just a regular air releasing from your joints kind of thing but then it, it, deep down i felt like it wasn't that I, I knew something was off so the next day i went to the a and e they did an x-ray they didn't find anything broken but then i think my my insurance plan had like a was partnered with this orthopedic um doctor like they, they had like orthopedic checkup thing so I, I decided to go to see us the, the doctor that was on that that panel uh so yeah so i went to see the doctor maybe like two days later um then and, and so so it was at mount elizabeth hospital he was this guy this guy called dr lim dr dr lim jit king uh what's his name Dr. Lim Jit King, Lim JK, that's what people keep calling him. Um, he's a, he's an orthopedic doctor slash surgeon or whatever you wanna, what, whatever the title is. So I went to see him and we did an MRI and then the MRI showed a complete tear of the ACL from one point to the other point. If you look in the, the MRI, you can just see like a little gap where the fluids are passing through, which is not supposed to be passing through. So I was like, half amazed at technology and looking at my own knee from the inside and also half like, oh shit, because what does this mean? Surgery, right? And so he was explaining to me and he was he was like explaining it to me in a very like it was a very good explanation of what was going on. I felt very confident with him being my surgeon and he was explaining it to me in a very uh, you know, way that I could understand and easily digest all the medical terms and all that. So he was saying that uh, ACL can't be repaired. You can't you can't just tie the two loose ends together and make a new ACL. It will never re- it will never repair on its own, and you can't. I mean, it will never heal on its own, and it will never and you can't repair it. You need to reconstruct it. So that means that I need to go for surgery, take out the 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 torn ACL bits take a piece of a, a tendon from my body, which is either the most common ones, are the patella, the kneecap, the hamstring, the back of the leg, the quad tendon, the thighs, the top of the thighs, you know, your quads, or a tendon from a, from a cadaver, or a, some dead guy, right? So these are the four common grafts. Grafts being a... Uh, what's the definition of graft? I don't know. It's just a thing, right? Your, your tendon. You gotta replace it with that tendon. So, so then I had to go back and think about, like, I did some research, like, what tendon do I want to use? Hamstring. Uh, okay, so the common ones are hamstring and quad. Hamstring a little bit more common just because, uh, it leaves a, a smaller scar. You don't have to cut into your quads. Patella, nobody uses it anymore because it can cause a lot of knee pains in the future. So patella is out. Cadaver, the, the, the cadaver, um, tendon. Some people will use it because, say, if you're old, you don't want to cut into your leg and take out your own thing to use because you might need it for yourself. So then maybe some dead guy can give you his tendon to use so you don't have to sacrifice your own. But the thing about getting a cadaver tendon 
or they call it an autograph, I think. A-U-T-O graph, G-R-A-T-F. If you get that and instead, uh, you know, that it's a dead guy, it could be like a 60-year-old dead guy, it's sitting in the freezer for like 20 years, you don't know the quality of it. And, and I was doing like a lot of research and almost like everybody's autograph like failed, so it snaps. It, it it's weak, what right? So it's best to take your own to replace it because of like cell regeneration or whatever. Like your body just adjusts better to your own DNA and your own bio structure. I'm gonna drink some water. Hmm. So so the choices for me were hamstring or quad and. Quad to me seemed more strong because if they cut into my quad, I could I could strengthen it again through squats or, or like, you know, whatever quad exercises that you would do. Hamstring, um, there's a chance that it might get a bit too tight and I, I, I need my hamstrings for yoga. I want to be able to stretch in that way. And, and my body is quite flexible. I wouldn't say I'm not hyper- uh, what do you call it, double joint? I'm not double jointed, I think. And I'm pretty flexible already. So if I were to take my hamstring, it might not be as strong as the quad. So, I mean, long story short, did my research. There's no no one graph is better than the other when it comes to these two. So I just decided on the quad. So that's what I that's what I chose. So I went, okay, so after a few consultations, uh, you know, I go back, get some medicine, get some more checkups. He did more scans, blah, blah, blah. So, okay, let's book the surgery date. So, I built, uh, I did it one month after, uh, about about a month after, because I wanted to just have it, I wanted to heal my, like, I didn't want to just dive straight into surgery. I wanted to give it some time to rest first. So, let's say I, 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 I popped my knee, I blew up. I blew up my knee in January, late January, or mid January, and then I my surgery was in March. So I had about a month and a half before surgery. And um, side side note for a bit. The ACL surgery isn't compulsory. You can essentially just never repair it and just train your muscles around the knee to act as the seat belt. And you can survive. You can you eventually you'll be fine, but then you just be driving a car without a seatbelt. So if anything happens again, you're fucked, and it's even worse now because you had, you know. So I'm I'm young. I'm I'm in the fitness industry. I want to do jujitsu again. It made sense for me to 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 do the reconstruction, but if you're like eighty years old, you don't see yourself doing any other sports. You're it's fine to just do physio. Two three months, you're back to normal. If you do the surgery, it's about six to twelve months before you're back to normal. So that's that's why people, you know, um, you know, oh, maybe I don't want to be on crutches for like six months. Maybe I don't want to go through that for a year. So then, uh, okay, I'm fine with not having an ACL. So if you're one of those people, it's, I mean, the doctor will explain it to you. But I just thought I mentioned it. So yeah, I chose to want to do it. Surgery date was booked on March. And then... Okay, so next story, next chapter. Uh, how surgery went. So on that day... And I'm, well, I'm gonna be... I'm gonna say I'm very impressed with Singapore's medical... Uh, whatever, like their medical... You know, it's legit. It's it's very... It's it's modern. It's I felt comfortable. All their technology is all on point. So I went to the hospital um, in the morning. I I had a water. I couldn't you know don't eat don't drink. Um, um, last the, the the night before. So today I, I had my last cup at around like nine a.m. Last cup of water. And then I arrived at the hospital at ten. Surgery was scheduled at like one or two. I can't remember. So the first three hours was just checking in, doing some scans, blood tests, la, uh, blood pressure. Go to this place, to go to that place, to sign in and to check and to paperwork, paperwork. 
And then we went, then I went to my room and then the nurse would brief me like, okay, so this is how you put on your gown. This is the room that you'll be staying in. You know, just like a little introduction. Okay, if you need to press this button, blah, blah, blah. Um, and every time when they, every time when I, a new nurse came in, they would ask me more questions. They would ask me the same questions and new questions. So like, okay, what's your name? What's your birthday? What's your IC number? What is your doctor's name? What is your What are you here for? I think it's just to make sure that like they're not operating on the wrong person. You know, like if you go in like, hi, are you John who's doing the brain surgery? Like, no, I'm Aaron. Oh, oh shit. So, so it's just a way for them to like make sure that they're operating on the right person. Uh, so you know this this I didn't wait. I don't, I wasn't like waiting around very long. I was just always keep. I would just wait half an hour here and I'll move somewhere. And there's always something to do. So three hours sort of went by. Time for surgery. Okay, I changed my outfit. I lie on my bed. I'm just sort of getting comfortable and texting my friends. Like, hey, look at this. Taking some pictures and then talking to my mom. Then I think like maybe 10 minutes later, the nurse, another nurse, so many nurses at Mount E. The, so they came in. Uh, one of them came in. And then... Uh, it's, it's, I had to, they pushed... They, put me on another bed and then they wheeled that bed into the operating room which is kind of cool and it's surreal and it's so strange so but I couldn't like I had to leave my glasses in my room because because they you know so because of that I couldn't really see what's going on which is a, it was a bit annoying I really wanted to experience it visually as well so I got wheeled into the you know from my room I wheeled all the way into the operating room oh no wait not the operating room I wheeled into the waiting area like this this is like car park for all the bits and it's just bits 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 like like a little car park they push me into this bit and there's a tv on top and then you have to wait for the anesthet wait to wait for whoever that comes to pick you up next so i was there i was watching the tv waiting for something to happen so the anesthesiologist came t- came and he spoke to me okay well, what's your name what's your ic number what are you here for who's your doctor blah blah what happened to you? Uh, okay, yeah. Oh, ACL. Oh, okay, blah blah. And he will brief me a little bit about, about about like what to expect. Okay, later. Um, we're gonna, um, like, we're gonna put this in your arm. We're gonna turn it on. I'll count to ten. You fall asleep. And then when you wake up later, I'm gonna say, uh, try not to bite. Uh, try not to bite onto the onto the the thing, cause there's a thing down your throat to help you breathe. Or something like that. So you're not supposed to bite on it, but apparently, when you wake up from that, from the anesthe- anesthetic, anesthesia, when it's, when you wake up from it, whatever, it, anesthetic, you, people always just bite down on it. So he's like saying, just try not to bite. I was like, oh, okay. I mean, <laughs> I'll try my best. Um, okay, so then my doctor came. Oh, no, wait. No, it was still, it was still the anesthesiologist. So then I think he did some paperwork, blah, blah, I spoke to the nurse. And then he, he wheeled me into the operating table. So, I mean, you know, whatever you see on TV, like Grey's Anatomy, fucking like, whatever show, right? It's really like that. Eh? Like you, you are wheeled down this hallway this, and I'm, 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 I'm on my bed. So I'm looking up and it's the lights, right? It's just like lights after lights after lights. And you can see the, the doctor or the nurse or the person pushing you and they're like next to each other and they're talking oh just give me 10 cc's of you know, whatever doctor talk and they would stop halfway and they talk to the other doctor down the hall hey how are your patient blah blah, blah. it was so surreal but I was just like I was I wasn't nervous I wouldn't say I was nervous I was just very excited like it's so new it's so new experience like it was just like very fun uh, I don't know why uh. so so I go into the operating, I got, I get pushed into the operating room and it's this big room and then like everybody knows everybody, it's like a kampong, it's so strange like they'll push in like, hey, how are you John? Uh, I keep, <laughs> I keep using this generic name John, okay, hey, how are you Tom? How are you David? Um, hey, how are your, your, your son, the school, blah, 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 they're just chit-chatting while they are like preparing the instruments and then there's these huge lights, like these UFO lights which I'm sure you've seen on TV. It's just, it's just looming over me. It's so, it's quite impressive. And then there's a, there's a, like a TV on the left, which is showing all the, like the heart rate 
like the you know the the EKG thing, your your monitor. So they 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 hook up the the thing onto my finger or whatever. The oh the, no, they put the sticky pads on my chest, so then you can see my heart beep beep beep. You know that thing. And then then the doctor said, like, see that's your heart. I was like, okay, cool. And then uh, he put in so there's a little thing in your 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 wrist, right? They put in the little tube, so they so they put in the anesthetic on this and it's anesthesia oh fuck anesthesia anesthetic okay I'll, I think it's that word they put in anesthetic um and then okay so then my doctor came in he's like hey Aaron how are you well okay you'll be fine later when you wake up I'm gonna say uh Aaron it's time to wake up surgery was a success uh I'll, uh, and he'll just say he'll say these words to me because I'm in a day state so he'll say it to me and I'll just sort of like acknowledge it however way I can and then that'll be it and then I'll go back to my room and I'll rest so he so the anesthesia this anesthesiologist puts it in turns the, the dial the, the vial he says alright you're gonna be asleep in 10 seconds and I was like I mean, like, I'll just give him a thumbs up because cause, uh, there was a oxygen mask thing on my face so I can really talk. And then uh, I could feel... <laughs> I could feel it. I could feel my face was melting. I could feel the world was... My eyes were just closing. It was so heavy. And I was trying to resist it. I was just trying to play. Like, I want to see how long it can last. I was like, okay, I was counting. Okay, one, two... Three, and I was just trying to fight it. I was trying to open my eyes. Oh, come on! Ah. And then, and then, and you just black out. And then when I, and then like, I dreamt. I dr- I dreamt I had a, a, a dream. It's not a it's not a life. It's not like I saw a tunnel or whatever. Like. I just had a dream, a very vivid dream. And then I woke up from that dream. It felt like you know two seconds. And then I hear the doctor Aaron, surgery went well. Uh, we fixed it. Everything's fine. You're fine. And I can't see him because my eyes are closed. But I can, I can feel like it's all blurry. Like it's all white. And you know when you get lightheaded, you see like white stuff on your eyes. So I see that. I maybe my eyes were open, but I couldn't see because my vision was blurry. But I could move, and I could hear. I could hear him say that. I can. I could sort of feel him touching my arm. I gave him a little sloppy thumbs up. Every time he said like Aaron, and I'm like, yeah, thumbs up. Surgery went well. Okay, thumbs up. I could, f- I could move, but it just felt so weird. I haven't, you know, connected my body yet. I think I was in and out for a bit. I think they would let you rest for an hour or something somewhere. They park you somewhere and let you rest. I'm not aware of that. I just that's why I heard. So then afterwards, uh, they wheeled me back into my room, and then. You know, I got a transfer from the the gurney to the my bed, and then when I moved my leg, I was like, "Oh man, it's so heavy!" And I was like, "It's so tight." It was so uncomfortable, but it wasn't painful. So it was just it felt tight, like I mean, cause there's no there's no blood flowing in, like you know, like you like your pins and needles, but it just felt so tight. And there was a huge machine wrapped around it to pump the ice and make it cool and reduce the swelling. And I looked at it and it's all, it's all like white, like the stocking was there and it's all bandaged up. So, uh, I sort of, sort of just like, okay, I'm trying to adjust my leg, trying to make it feel as comfortable as I can. Uh, but to know a success, but then I guess that's, you can't expect to be comfortable Im- immediately after surgery. So I think, couple of hours go by, I get to eat my first meal, um, and slowly you sort of gain a bit of feeling, not feeling, just more awareness of your leg, awareness of of, of what's going on, and, and you start to, okay, maybe I, if I lean a bit here, you get used to, just start to get used to it, okay, if I lean a bit here, maybe it don't feel so uncomfortable, okay, then I put my bit, I think I raise it up higher, but I put, put a pillow here, so I'm just experimenting, see what makes me feel more comfortable, Switching the channels, you know, just trying to entertain myself. And then I think by this time it was like 4 p.m. or something. Um, 
And then I ate my meal. I was hungry. I didn't feel nauseous. I didn't feel uh, like I had no appetite. I had. I ate everything. <laughs> I, I ate everything. I was hungry. I wasn't hungry, but I could eat. I, and I knew I had to. I had to eat to get like you know my nutrients and stuff. And of all the things that I ordered, like on the menu, right? There's like lobster porridge, lah. God, God, this kind of fancy thing. I'm gonna order chicken rice for lunch, lah. It looked nice. Everything else felt like super power. Like, like cannot eat. I won't be full if I eat it, so I just ordered chicken rice. It was alright. It was alright. It wasn't nothing special. Um, so I think I just spent the rest of my night just tossing and turning, trying to be comfortable, texting, watching TV. Listening to my podcast, and then every hour a nurse would come in and change something like the with the blood pressure. You change change the IV drip, the 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 refill the ice in the machine that's pumping into my knee thing. And then my doctor came in. How are you? Blah blah. blah. All right, good. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Cause it was like maybe eight p.m. or something. So okay. Uh, Text my mom, call my mom, text my friends, take some pictures, send it to them. Ha ha he he. All this while, still, no pain. And when I say no pain, I don't mean like how I define pain is like 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 if you're if you're sick, there's pain. Oh, my stomach hurts. Ouch. That there's pain. Right. I'm going through pain. But there was, I didn't go through any pain. Like, there was discomfort. It was uncomfortable, but there was never any pain. So, like, uh, like, so, so imagine if you're very hot, you're very, you're very hot, right? You're, it's a hot day. You're very uncomfortable. It's so hot to the point where you can't sleep. You can't focus. It's so hot. You're sweating. Oh, it's unbearable. But there's no pain. Like, there, you're not, you're not feeling pain. You know what I mean? You're not being burnt. You're just uncomfortable. And that's how I felt. Like, there was, and I thought it was maybe the 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 anesthetics anesthesia anesthesia uh, anesthetic anesthesia the painkiller hadn't worn off so I was like okay maybe if it wears off I'm gonna feel it like oh this so I was like okay I'll be prepared for it uh so every hour the nurse comes in gives me some medicine changes my IV drip, changes my whatever, takes some notes, blah, blah, blah. That's pretty much it for the whole stay. I stayed one night in the hospital. I couldn't move out of the bed. I had to fucking pee in a catheter, or what do you call that? Like a little container. It was the strangest experience because it's gross. I am embarrassed every time I needed to pee. I hold it and I cannot hold it anymore. Then I just, then I pee. And then, because you're lying down, the the pee doesn't, the pee needs gravity to to go outward. You just imagine peeing when you're lying down; it's not gonna. There's no pressure, right? So I need to have one leg down, my good leg down, so I have to lift myself up, and then to pee. But then that was very awkward and uncomfortable, and then it was just fucking weird. And I would just have to buzz. To call the nurse to come and collect it, and I was like, "Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, here it is." Uh, and but they were very nice. They were like, "Oh, it's okay. It's okay." It's like, "Yeah, oh, okay, thanks." Um, anyway, uh, had dinner, uh, and then next morning, had breakfast, and then just more waiting around because I was just, I wanted to go home already. I was just so bored the night before. I couldn't really sleep because I was so uncomfortable. Um, once in a while I'll sleep and I th- I, I could feel I think they gave me more painkillers because I felt there was a moment at night where I kept drowsing in and out it felt like a a slight high I don't know anyway next morning the pharmacist came in to explain all the medication that I needed to take the physio came in to, ex- to teach me how to what exercises I needed to do and how to use the crutches and then my doctor came in to just sort of brief me on whatever that he briefed me on. And the anesthesiologist also came in to just check up on me, so that was nice. My mom came in around, so I think checkout was like at 12 or something the next day. My mom came around like 
and she surprised me. I mean, I knew she was coming to pick me up, but I think she didn't text me. She was downstairs. Or she, so she just sort of popped in like, hey, what are you doing here so fast? So I packed my stuff. Uh, they gave me a lot of the, the you know, the bandit, the, the, the sock, the, the, the ice packs and all that kind of like stuff to, to bring back. The crutches I had to bring back. So then they wheel, wheelchaired me all the way to the taxi place. Got into taxi, headed home, and, you know, hence the start of my healing journey. Whew, I've been talking for like half an hour. Um, so, one day surgery, next day I'm home, it's been, oh, okay, so like the first week, first few days, first few days, let's say first four, four days, right, it was... Um, it was just a lot of sitting around, keeping the legs straight, trying to straighten it, because you're not supposed to bend the knee, or rather, you I mean, you can bend the knee, but you're supposed to straighten it because you want it as straight as possible, otherwise, if it doesn't straighten out properly, you end up walking with a limp, so you want to always try and straighten it, so that means like pressing your knee down. And then you just want to keep firing up the quads. You want to keep engaging the quads. You want to keep flexing your foot to get the blood flowing and, and just just keep activating it immediately. So like, even after surgery or so, they, when the doctor came into my to my room, he was like, just start engaging your quads. Try and flex your toes, wiggle your toes, do as much as you can. Just engage, disengage, engage, disengage. Like you kick your muscles out, right? So when I got home, that was what I did. And, ooh, my, someone's home. Uh, I couldn't lift my leg up. So it was a lot of just dragging it around, using my other leg to, to, to act as a lever. And I couldn't bend it, so it was a bit awkward. So uh, walking with two crutches, and then I uh, couldn't really put a lot of weight on it, but I could still stand. I could stand still? But it took a while to get used to. So like maybe after day three, day four, then I get a little bit more strength in my leg. I try to lift it up. Sometimes can, sometimes cannot. It's still very weak. Day five, day six. Um, I think I went back for my... F I think after four or five days, I went back to change the dressing. Doctor gave me more um, advice, blah, blah. Checked it. Okay, no infection. All good, blah, blah routine and then I at the next the following maybe like after a week I started to just use one crutch because it was just easier and then I would just ice it all the time I would just ice it you can never ice too much just keep icing it uh was well, you know it's it's so so now it's been about a week and a half and I and, and I just went out like I went for my first physio yesterday he taught me to okay do this do that and after I did it, like I did like 50 reps of this, 50 reps of that, and my leg is sore, but but I feel more connected to it. Like I feel like, oh, I can engage this now. So I feel more confident with moving my leg. And then he said, the physio told me like, uh, next week onwards, just probably going to try and wean you off the crutches. I was like, cool, okay, that's what I want. Because I got to start work in like two weeks time. Um, so now, so, so like that was yesterday, today I took the chance, oh, and yesterday also was the first time I took public transport. It was an adventure, but it gave me more confidence. So at least I don't have to spend money taking cab, you know, to, to and fro the hospital. Um, so yes, yesterday, I mean, uh, today, wait, uh, oh yeah, today, uh, I went to meet my friend Audrey. She took me out to this donut place. Thanks for doing that. <laughs> but it was also the first time that I didn't use my crutches to go out, which again felt fine after a while. Granted, I didn't walk around as much. She, she was kind enough to drive me around, but uh, still pretty all right. Like, I feel stable. And now, like, you know, walking to my kitchen, walking around the house, I don't use crutches. So yeah, great. And this is the 10-day mark since surgery so that's sort of give you a gauge of where you would be but then again everybody's healing is different so yeah 
um, strength wise, it's getting back slowly. I can stand. I can I can like put on my pants and stand on that on my fucked up leg. Uh, I can't. But I can't bend it. I can't. I can barely bend it. Like it's like seventy degrees. It's not even ninety degrees. And the doctor did. Uh, the physio did say around a week you should be at ninety degrees. So well, I'm I'm not. 90 degrees maybe it's the stitches that are holding that are tightening it could be that but uh i don't know i just try now so now i try to bend it and bend it more like to just stretch the rubber band so to speak which is my new acl um so yeah and again throughout this whole experience no no pain just different levels of discomfort my quality of life was never really affected. I never, I was, I wasn't like super sad. I was just fine. It was just like, oh, now I can't move my leg. Like it's, it's just imagine like it's more of an inconvenience. Like say now you have to use your left hand to do everything. You open the door, you use your mouse, you type on your keyboard, you use your phone, you eat with your left hand, you brush your teeth, all of your left hand. So it's a, it just takes getting used to. So that that's how I felt. And I've been like working out, you know, I try to do my push-ups. I, I have a lot of time to chill. It's quite, it's quite fun, like to just chill, do my podcast, you know, watch, watch TV, watch, watch whatever videos on YouTube. And my mom's working from home, so she's, she's taking care of me, but really I'm taking care of her as well. I'm, co- I'm, I'm cooking, I'm cleaning because my mom's busy working. So I do all the dishes, I do my laundry, I cook, I cook for her. The only thing that I can't do was to go out and buy food or to get groceries. But then again, you can always just order, right? So like if you're living alone or you don't have someone to take care of you, fret not. Because through my experience, if I was living alone, it's fine. Eh? I think can survive one. And then, but then, but I, you know, as of now, I think I can, I'm confident to go out and just buy food. Eh? So I never ordered any grab food since my whole stint here. I just kept cooking and and my mom would buy dinner sometimes or she'll cook so so it's all good um going to the shower or like you 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 just have to wrap it um wrap it up in in cling fill cling wrap and you just tape it to keep it dry so i i i used to sh- i the first week because it was still hard to move i showered like maybe once every two days but now i shower every day cuz because I can, and like it you know, makes me feel makes me feel fresher. And then if I do my push ups and stuff, I'll be sweating. So so, I'll just I'll just shower lah. And pooping, it's fine. I just couldn't bend my knee, so at least I just have to keep it straight. Pooping's fine. Cooking, I think stairs, going downstairs, going upstairs, still fine. As long, uh, I haven't tried going down any stairs without using crutches yet. Uh, but going down, going up, it's if you have your crutches and most stairs have the handles, well, so you just slowly go down. It's fine. Um, all, all in all, again, yeah, it's not a big, not it's it's fine. Like uh, I mean, it's not as bad as it sounds. Uh, it's gonna be a long road of recovery, nonetheless, and uh, it's about six to twelve months. A lot of physio, a lot of rehab. About one year before I can even think of going back to jujitsu, which is, um, I mean, I just have to accept it, lah, right? Yeah. I still look at jujitsu tutorial videos. I still love jujitsu. I, I, I want to keep doing it. Uh, I love yoga. I love jits. I, you know, these are the things that I won't stop doing. So, and I'm not afraid of going back to it. I mean, I'll just be more careful when I do, lah, you know? It's a lesson. It's the price to pay. It's a lesson for you to not put your your ego over. You know, it's uh, something. It's something to do with ego for sure. You know, if I had tapped earlier, or if I had just I not fought, not resisted it. And when I look back on it, like I was telling a few of my friends this, when I look back on that experience when it happened, there was no way to avoid it. Like there was no way I could have avoided it. I did everything at that point that I felt I would have done. It's not like I purposely like, no, I want to I want to turn this way 
or you know I wasn't it there was no you know there was no way I could have avoided this happening and in hindsight like it's just a lesson and then and and when I and when I realized I I couldn't avoid it I this couldn't have been avoided I was excited about what what this was going to teach me you know so I had a lot of I had a lot of time to think about this I had a lot of time to reflect and I'm not I'm not sad that it happened uh I experienced a lot of new experiences met a lot of people and you, and, and, and you learn about stuff right you learn about yourself I feel strong now that I know that I'm capable of handling to heal and you're not healing physically you're healing in different ways or so because the time you take away from work and just time with yourself you get to know yourself a little bit better you start to heal in different ways so uh, i feel change coming i feel different i feel refreshed having you know 3 weeks off work who wouldn't it's like a holiday a stay care a little a little lockdown once again um but i feel hopeful which is very strange like uh, you know someone else who who had fucked up the ACL would have been super grumpy in pain why did this happen to me uh oh, life sucks but i didn't i was lucky enough to not feel those things or to ex- or to have those thoughts um so I, i'm quite that ha- happy thankful about it that i'm able to see it in that way and if i can see this in this way what else can i see that's supposedly negative in a positive way because i could not have avoided this there's a lot of things in my life that i could have avoided either and am i able to to see it in a different way you know something to think about okay uh that's it i think that's my story. Whew, 45 minutes, 47 minutes, almost 50, almost an hour. Thank you for listening. Thank you for if you're still listening to to be still like, you know, at the end of it. Thanks for still being here. Uh, if you like what you hear, if you if you if you like what I'm doing, feel free to donate to my coffee page. It's coffee. Dot, it's coffee.com/mostlyyoga, I think. It's in, uh, I'll link it in the description below if you want to support the channel. The <laughs> uh, more episodes coming soon. Once I get better, I will be interviewing more people. It's uh, uh any final words? I think that's it. Okay, uh happy Thursday, happy happy March, happy 2021 everybody. Then uh I'll see you on the mat. at yoga or at the studio or wherever have a good week have a good life okay bye